there game developers my name is titan hex and i'm here for another tutorial on rpg maker mv so where we last left off was just going through that database figuring out some of the things in it in this case we're going to go ahead and check out the actors and classes tabs we're going to go a little bit more in depth with these so first off we're going to check out this actors tab and we're going to go ahead and start by changing the maximum amount of actors in our game to a number that we feel is right think of just do some pre-planning and think of how many actors are going to be in your game how many characters are going to be fighting in a party just how many characters will be in your party in general so actors appear um, usually in a line following you if you have a setting ticked here in system that is the show player followers. So if you have this ticked or turned on, the actors will follow you, follow behind you as you move throughout the game. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, if you don't have that ticked, then the characters, will, it'll just be your first character in your party representing your graphic, um, basically your avatar. So keep that in mind. Now we're going to start by adding a new actor. Let's see, good name. Uh, we're going to go with Charles. And let's see, the nickname. By the way, if you ever hover over the name of something, it'll tell you a little bit more info about it. Very useful in case you don't want to run back through these tutorials and you just kind of want to refresh yourself uh, without having to re-watch -re everything. So this one, uh, the nickname only dis is displayed on the status screen. Same with the profile, it's only ever displayed on the status screen. So just keep that in mind, you don't really have to worry about it. We're gonna leave those two blank. Now the class is something we set over here. We'll go more in depth in classes soon enough, but this is your character's initial class. You can use eventing to change their class later on. For now, we don't have to really worry about it. So we're gonna go ahead and go with the default hero class for this character. Their initial level is going to be whatever you want when your character first starts or first joins your party. This is gonna be the level they start at. There's also ways in eventing that we can change it so that it's the same as our party leader. But for now, we're gonna set it at six and we're gonna just change the max level to 50. Max level should be pretty self-explanatory. Now face is going to show up in the side view uh, in the battle. It's gonna show up behind the menu. Uh, in your normal general menu, it's going to show up usually for skills, items. It's gonna just show next to the player with and all their stats and it's gonna show up in the status menu. So those are the places where the face shows up. We're going to pick something appropriate. Uh, let's go with this guy. So we're gonna go ahead and go with this young guy. We're gonna to go to characters and we're gonna set a character graphic. This is the graphic that's gonna show up when the character is following us or when the character is our front graphic character. Boom. So easy enough there. These by the way are actor or character sheets and they come in a few different forms. So if they have this dollar sign that means that they only have one actor. Um, means that it basically says to the game, hey, this is just one single sheet. We'll go more into those later. That's gonna be more the resource manager. Um, but these little guys are, are the walking animations, the moving sprites. So unfortunately, we don't have a, a appropriate side view battler. We're just gonna go with this one right here. We can always use the generator to create one, but for the most part, this is gonna work. We can always go into Photoshop and edit this. So the side view battler, whenever you have the uh, system ticked or turned on for you side view battle, this is going to be what the battler looks like for that party member. That's pretty much it. Very simple, very easy. Next is the note. So notes are only used for plugins. You can just generally leave it blank unless you have a plugin that uses them. Weapon 
is your initial all right so this is your initial equipment it's the stuff you start with uh when you begin the uh, when you first get the character into your party this is the weapons and equipment that they start with now the initial equipment is always tied to the class so if i have sword set and shield if their initial class is a warrior which warriors can't use swords only heroes can then they won't get the weapon uh, they won't start with a sword weapon they'll just be set to none so we can go to axe now that's all fine and good um, obviously that's not what we want though so hero is set initial equipment is sword and shield and we can just set a whole bunch of other initial equipment that they start with if we change the class we're gonna have to reset up all that initial equipment again so just remember that now these are the traits traits are sort of the flavor the the settings of the character there's a whole bunch of stuff we can do so element rate makes it so that we can do let's see 200 percent so there's a whenever we're hit by fire this character charles is hit by fire it does 200 percent damage uh, if he's debuffed um it's way more likely to debuff attack if he gets hit by an attack debuff or we can make it so it's way less likely so let's go ahead and go to the fire one and then we'll go to debuff rate they it's unlikely that all his attack will be debuffed uh, we can set up a whole bunch of stuff like that state rate uh the likelihood that states will affect him so there's only a um 50 chance he'll ever be silenced and resist means that he can never be affected by it so parameter these are his just general parameters so his max mp could be 120 percent making him like really durable uh, so if he has a warrior class, he's going to have a lot more HP than the typical warrior. We can do a whole bunch of stuff like that. We can make it so that his max MP is 90%, so he's less likely to have really good stats um, if he's trying to be a mage or something like that. Then you have the extra parameters. There's a whole bunch of those. I won't get into them. And there's special parameters, and there's even more of those, which I'm not going to get into them. I'll get into them at a later point. Uh, but they are way more in-depth than we're going to need. So next we have the attack element. So whenever he does a typical attack um, with a weapon or anything that doesn't have an element set, this element is going to be what is used. So we can make it so that he has a default physical attack element, which is the default no matter what anyways. So we can make it so that whenever he attacks, he attacks with water fire etc we can make it so that whenever he attacks he has a chance to apply a state can make it so that his attack speed is higher so maybe he is he's more likely to go first in a turn um, attack times plus this is the uh, number of times a normal attack hits a target so if I set it to plus two he will hit three times when he attacks we could make it we could also do something so that he has three attacks but his attack parameter is always 33 percent so he does three attacks but it just generally evens out to 99 percent uh, we could also make it so that he has a attacks uh, it, it would actually make it so that if he has a weapon that applies an attack state he is more likely to apply that or if it has a debuff or anything like that it's more likely to apply it it's a neat little thing we could do to make our character a little bit more interesting then we have the seals this is usually more for class and when i get into classes i'm going to go over the equip and skill seals and uh, locks and stuff like that and then we have other so i can make it so that his he has a 200 percent chance to have gain an extra action this explains how it works um just kind of keep it in mind you read this whole thing and you'll understand how actions work so you get double actions or something like that special flags you can read all about the special flags by hovering your mouse over this collapse effect is only for enemies you really won't have to worry about it for your actors and classes then party abilities, these are more things that don't affect battle. They just affect the general 
uh, way the game plays and how the character sort of acts outside of battle. So we have our character set up. Just a basic thing here. Most of the time you won't have or even need any kind of traits. Um, this just adds some flavor to the character. Uh, they're, they usually default at this, so the element rate for physical is 100%, ice 100%, this debuff rates and everything are normal, parameters are normal, nothing special really to take note of here. You can always leave these blank and that'll just be at the default. Whew, well that sums it up for actors. We're going to jump into classes. Alright, so classes. Obviously we want to change the maximum to however many classes we think will be in our game. You can always increase this if you need to, so don't worry about it. The name of this class will be Prince. So we'll set up an experience curve. The speed at which he levels up, we'll set it to the default, but we have a whole bunch of different parameters here and it tells us how much experience is needed for each level. Next, we have the parameter curves. These are the growth, the rate at which they grow. So we can make it so he has very poor eight max HP growth. We can make it so that he has very good max HP. Uh, we can set it just to an average using this, and we can also generate our own curve. So a slow one will make it so that it has this sort of hump that goes like this. I'll show you. See? Oh, uh, never mind. Slow curve makes it go the opposite. So it goes really slow at first and then bam starts to speed up to where his 98th and 99th level he's gaining a ton of almost about that 100 a little over 100 hp whereas in the beginning his first level he only gains one hp uh, we can also make it fast so that it's the opposite you see this giant hump here and we can set whatever number we want. So we could go to 50 and 4,500. We can set it to fast and boom. We have a curve going here. And we can do that with any of these. So we can set up all of these however we feel. Next is the traits. Now I told you that I was going to explain these skills and equip seals and whatnot. So we can add a skill type. So this is the menu that he can, uh, when he's accessing his menu uh, to use a spe special ability or a spell, they'll usually be categorized into one of these. Um, so we can add the skill type, uh, add the magic menu to it. We can uh, seal it so that he can never use them. We can add a skill so that he starts off with a skill right off the bat, or we can seal a skill so that the character can never use that skill. So we can make it so that the character can never use heal, but that he does have magic. And there's also ways to unseal these using events. So you can make it so there's a special event where he uh, unseals his spark ability. Little things like that can be pretty cool. Um, next, we have the equips. So we can determine which equipment the character is allowed to equip we can make it so that the character is able to equip daggers flails axes we can make it so that they can equip flails we can even go and make our own so it's pretty easy uh, you'll do that in types we won't worry about it right now but you can change the equipment that the character can equip so we, this one can equip daggers and general armor we can also add things like access accessories and stuff like that. So lock equip makes it so that they can't equip extra armor or they can't unequip their weapons, their shields. They can't change what's in them. Uh, they can't add it if there isn't anything in them. So we can lock some of these so that you can't, if you have a temporary character and you don't want the player to remove their armor, uh, we can make it so that it's locked. We can seal equip types so that they can never equip accessories unless we somehow enable it. Uh, we can make it so that they can dual wield. Dual wield means the character will equip weapons in one hand and in their other hand equip um, 
and they're offhand, they'll, they'll equip a second weapon. Usually in the shield hand. So those are neat little things we can do. Set up our character to be sort of how we want. Note, of course, is the same as any other note, usually used in plugins. Don't have to worry about them too much unless we're using a plugin, which we're not. And skills to learn. So basically this sets what level the character will learn a skill. So we can make it so that they learn dual attack at three and triple attack at nine. We also have ways to just add skills. So we can make it so that a character will learn a skill if they purchase a book or use a book or something like that. You can set up your own skill learning system using events. This is a nice way to do it just real quickly through levels. Boom, all right. So as you can see, all we have to do is change this guy to Prince and we can change his weapons. Uh, we'll, we'll have to make a proper weapon for him. Right now there is no daggers in the weapon list, so we'd have to make one. But we'll do that later. This is sort of the character that we have going. Uh, we can always change these. Uh, and this is basically the actors and the class tabs. Super useful, tons of stuff you can do. You can add a lot of flavor to your game using these. So that's it. Uh, those are the two tabs. That wraps up this part of the database. Hope you join me for our next part when we go over skills and items and possibly even jump into the formula. So custom formula, there's a ton we can do with it. It'll be exciting. For now though, thank you for watching I hope you learned something. Uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe. I'd be happy to help if I'm available. Maybe some other, someone else will be able to help you. Um, like always shows me that you're supportive and that I should keep doing this. And subscribe so that you always know when the next video is, the next time you're going to learn something. As always, I'll see you in the next tutorial. And thank you.